hello hello Dixie Belle paint fans how are you today it is Melissa from the top drawer RVA back with you because it is Wednesday and every Wednesday at 3 I sit here on the floor and play with some paint so welcome apologize about being MIA last week I had to take a family member in uh, for some surgery and it took a lot longer than I expected so I am back with my promised piece because last week I talked a little bit about what we were going to paint today and I also mentioned that if you wanted to paint with me all you need is a piece of furniture and one paint color all right because we are going to be doing a wash today a wash on wood and you can do wash on paint with paint on anything really I like to do it on a more rustic piece a piece that has maybe a little bit more damages than normally I would paint on because normally you go in and you'd fix all these little nicks and all these little bumps and scratches but I actually really like them when I do a paint wash because it kind of brings out the character of the piece and shows you uh, what it's all about so we're gonna do a paint wash today in one color simple painting one color with Dixie Belle's midnight sky so if you feel like painting with me grab your paint grab your brushes and let's get to it all right perfect so what are we gonna do first well we have this cutie little wash stand that I've cleaned with white lightning you can see these kind of rustic kind of gothic hinges really kind of cool they're, they look like little flames I've kept the original hardware which is fairly basic but it keeps in kind of the pattern of the piece you know I don't sometimes I don't like to change the hardware too much because you mess with the integrity of the look and I like a rustic look and the look we're going to do today will match well with these handles I could however either put a little bit of bronze gilding wax on there or I could spray paint them black there is options for this look um, but we're not there yet so we're just gonna paint and do some would you bend today so welcome welcome yay happy to see everybody today I'm gonna aim the camera down a tiny little bit hello Donna how are you okay so before we begin this is pretty plain right like pretty basic and the, the style of finish that we're going for today is fairly one color we're just going to put it on and wipe it back put it on and wipe it back we're going to play with the actual wood grain that you're seeing on this piece but i thought for a nice little added touch we would put some would you bend onto our piece of furniture today this is would you bend number one zero zero nine okay would you bend comes sometimes in a set of two so this is a set of two would you bends when you receive your would you bend in the mail it is hard it is rigid you can see right there you can click on it it's quite it's quite hard like a real piece of wood right and you have to heat it up with your heat gun put your wood glue on and apply it and my brain was like I need to kind of dress this piece up a little bit like not that plain isn't beautiful it is but I like to put all the things on all the time so I thought we could add a little bit of this to each door kind of to play a little bit with this because if you look at this kind of curve this little flame shape like shape of the hardware on here this is going to accent that fairly well and it'll be painted right over you can paint on wood you bend you can stain on wood you bend you can drill on wood you bend all of the things so I'm going to show you how I do that today all right so let's jump in I'm going to aim you down so you can see what I'm doing down here on the floor so now you can see down here where I'm going to be working I have a heat gun I have wood glue and I have tape so what I'm going to do for these little wood you bends is heat them up on the back of the wood you bend molding and once they're heated up even though this is flat and these are flat it's always important to heat them up and make sure that you get them completely flat right we're going to apply them to our piece with wood glue tape them up and paint over top of them so if you need to snap that take a picture real quick if you need to find these on the Dixie Belle paint page they have an exclusive line of wood you bend moldings that are not available anywhere else so if you're looking for them that's where you're gonna have to find them so I'm going to heat up the back of my wood you bend molding with my hot air gun giving it some heat this is flat and this is flat so I'm not really worried I just want to definitely heat them up so after this is warm they become kind of bendable you can shape them I'm going to take wood glue it's always recommended to use wood glue when you're using your wood you bend moldings and I'm going to hope that it comes out because I'm not a good lid closer we know this but I swear I just used this today and it worked this morning so let's just pick the skin off and try this again come on little wood glue here we go so I'm just gonna take my wood glue and smear it onto the piece of this little wood you bend I'm gonna take my finger because I'm messy like that I'm gonna make sure to kind of get around all of these little crevices and make sure that it's on there okay so now once you have your wood glue on here you're able to take it and then stick it on your piece let's start with the top so I can line them up nice and even Steven so once you get your wood glue on here I have some tape on my leg I'm going to tape up 
my wood you've been molding. This is just going to be my extra hands to get it on here and hold it in place. If it helps you, you could always tip your piece of furniture so that your furniture is then laying flat. But I'm just going to heat it up one more time like that and ensure that it's stuck to my piece. So now I've got one here. Let's put one over here and do the same thing. So I'm going to heat up the back of my budgie bed. And I'm going to put that wood glue right there on the back. And we're going to mash it around with my finger, making sure to get it on all the crevices. If I miss your comments or questions while I'm working, I will come back in after I'm finished and answer them for you. So now I've got the wood glue on the back of my piece and I'm going to do the same thing. When I do one side, I'm going to do to the other. I want it to match, okay? I'm going to stick it there, line it up, and use my extra tape to be a safety girl and hold it to the piece. It's always important as well once you put that wood glue on the back of your piece and then you stick it on your furniture to heat it up one more time. This is just kind of ensuring that it's flat. It's also going to help you kind of get it dry fairly quickly because as soon as it's dry you can start painting over top. I just like to make sure that they are on there and doing what they should, staying where I put them. So now I have two would you bends, one at the top here, one at the top here. Let's do the same thing and add them to the bottom down here. Again, heating up the back of my would you bend molding. It's already flat, so I'm really not that worried. If it was like a bendy surface, I would make sure that this was really heated up and bendable and malleable, but I'm putting flat on flat. I just want to make sure that I've warmed it up proper so that it will help adhere it to the piece. Okay? So we're going to take the same would you bend. We're going to do the same thing that we did to the top. We're going to do this down here at the bottom now. I'm just going to stick it onto my cabinet, making sure to hold it tight with that tape and heat it up one more time. How are we doing? Hanging in? Perfection. Also, if you don't follow me at the Top Drawer RV, I would love it if you would head over to my Facebook page. I did link it in the description. I am super duper close to my uh, next milestone, which is 40,000 followers here on Facebook. So if you take a quick minute to make sure that you head over there and follow me, I would greatly appreciate it. Get me to that goal real quickly. I I'm, I'm think I'm like less than 100 people away from meeting that milestone, which is kind of cool. You know, numbers are just numbers, but at the end of the day, it's kind of nice to know that you have that many people hanging out and watching you play with paint, right? So I'm going to tape up my other Would You Been Molding. And don't worry, if you did put these up and then realized, hey, I made a boo-boo and my Would You Been Molding is crooked or I don't like it there, I've changed my mind, you can always heat them up again and then take them off. You can reuse these. You're not locked into uh, to when you put them down. So just know that as well, okay? That you can change your mind with would you bend and you can take them off. <laughs> You're totally allowed and you can do it very, very easily. All right, now that we have that part done, I'm gonna aim you up and we'll see. Thank you, Kristen. I know, I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with that number. It took me a long time on Facebook. Facebook is a slow grow, y'all. It takes a while to uh, get those followers for some reason. Facebook is slower than all the other apps for me. I don't know why. Okay, so this is chalk mineral paint. This is called Midnight Sky. It is not the blackest of the black. In the chalk mineral paint line, the blackest of the black is caviar. So this has almost like a smokier hue to it. When it's dry, it's gonna be a little bit more gray, which is perfect because I can still come in with my waxes and add any depth and detail into the corners that I might be looking for. So let's talk a little bit about the technique that I'm gonna teach you today. This technique works great on old pieces of say oak you know sometimes you get a piece of furniture and it's super old and it's um grainy and maybe it's stained or it's got a burn mark but it's really thirsty old wood this look works so good on like any type of those old oak or pine pieces so this little nightstand slash washstand i'm not really sure what it is has been cleaned with white lightning and i did give it a slight sand scuff with my scuffing pad the reason i gave it a slight sand scuff was just to give it a little bit of tooth a little bit of something to grab onto when i come here with my paint so the other tools you're going to need are gloves if you don't like getting messy but we all know that i like to make a mess paper towel and or some like cut up old rags if that's what you prefer to recycle, you can do that too. But I have paper towel here on the floor. So I have one brush and it really doesn't matter what brush you use because 
This technique is put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. We're going to do a lot of that today. I'm going to dip in to my midnight, right? Midnight sky. And we're going to start to work in this section. Let's start at the top. Let's bring you in and, and kind of aim you up so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So this, I've taken out the hardware, but for some reason I cannot get these screws out. I was actually thinking about changing the hardware, filling the holes, but y'all, they're stuck in there like nobody's business. I can't get them off. So we're going to work with what we have today. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to start to like just paint it on, okay? We're not going to be fancy. We're not worrying about like a specific look or coverage because really what all I want you to do is get this paint inside of any of the scratches, inside of any of the areas where it's going to live. If there's like a chip or a mark, anything like that, get it and push it into those holes, okay? Like there's like a, a knot over here on the wood and there's some scratches around the outside of this, this piece. Okay, so now it's on there, right? This is the next step. And this is the part where you can control how much you're gonna put on and how much you're gonna take off. I'm going to spray with water, not a lot, just a little bit, and I'm gonna to start to wipe back. What you're gonna see is that you're gonna see some wood grain. I, I can wipe in one direction, you don't have to. I kinda of like to go with the wood grain a little bit, but all we're doing is creating a wash of color. And like I said, you can do this with any color. A wash of color over top of the wood. So, you all know my puppy Stella, right? You know Stella, my brindle boxer? She was like the inspo for this piece when I started doing this like four years ago. <laughs> A million years ago, it feels like. Um, she's that brindly, should I call her? Should we see if she'll come in? I mean, I know you guys all love a puppy. Stella, come here. Stella, Stella, come. I hear feet. Here she comes. Come here, beauty. I want to show them something on the camera. Come closer. She's like, oh no, you have paint, mom. So see how Stella's hair is brown and black? She is legit the inspo <laughs> for this look. Brown, black, brown, black. Like she's like the perfect little inspo for this piece because once you start pulling back that paint and revealing that little bit of brown underneath, what happens is you start to get like a a really washed out look. That's the only way I can describe it. Washed out or burned out, however you'd like to, to call it. Well, thank you, my beauty, for coming in here when I called you. You did a great job being a model today. Now be gone. <laughs> oh, she licked me right in the face. All right, so you can just build. So say you put this, this wash on and you're like, oh, I really want it to be thicker on one section. Like you maybe wanted to have more black on one section and then more wood coming through in another. All you need to do is either pat or wipe and start to pull back where that paint is sitting. Like you're in control of how much you leave on here. This is also really a fast finish. Like you're able to do a whole piece really quick using this technique. So now like I would leave this. Once this is done and dry, I would seal it with a clear coat, but I would totally leave this because I love this kind of black, brindle wash out look. I like the wood that's peeking through. It's rustic. It's organic. It's highlighting any of the marks and the scratches. This is like the simplest of finishes for anybody to learn. I'm going to bring you in nice and close so you can catch a, a glimpse of what this looks like nice and close up. Can you see that beautiful brown and black peeking through on the piece? This is what we're going to do to the entire piece. And once it's dry, we'll seal it and we'll put the hardware back on. And this is what you're left with. A rustic, beautiful, washed out, brindle finish. Super simple. Anybody can do this. One coat of paint, one color of paint. Like you can do this so fast, you will be surprised. All right, let's see. And then, so Jan saying the pieces that she's done has sold really fast. And I agree. Every single piece that I've done this lick on, goes flying out the door. It's that one color, one look finish. Let's work on this because I want to give these times to shore up a little bit more. I'm just going to kind of work on this little piece right here and then down here at the bottom. Can we see the bottom? You can. So I'm just going to brush that midnight sky on. Not even like 100% full coverage, y'all. Like we're just gently brushing that color on. I'm going to take a new paper towel because they get they get pretty contaminated pretty quick. That's the only thing about this is that you kind of make a, a bit of a mess. I mean, wear gloves if you want, but you're just getting in here and you're, you're 
rubbing on and rubbing off. So wherever you want that paint to kind of stay thicker, rub lighter. Wherever you want that paint to kind of go on and be brushed back, like I like to see a little bit more wood in certain spots, pull back a little bit harder. See how you can really control? And you're not locked into this either. Like you could do this and keep going. You could go in and keep adding more layers of paint and building whatever you would like on your piece. Like you don't have to do just one coat. You could keep going. I've had a piece where I had a big burn mark on the top before, so I just kept adding to pretty much cover that big burn mark and then kept pulling back the rest of the areas. Let's work on this door right now. Let's see if we can get these would you bends off and dry. So would you bend moldings, as soon as they're dry, you can paint over top of them. They're really fast, like that's on there. It's secure, it's really not going anywhere. They are gonna be a little bit darker, right? We're gonna actually go in here and really get our paint in and around the would you bend moldings because I don't wanna see any of that light wood. The wood that I want peeking through is dark, right? It's a dark wood. I mean, this color to me is like a deep walnut. So I'm just gonna really get in here and saturate these would you bend moldings. But doing a paint wash is almost like a, a, the simplest forgotten way that you can do anything. I used to do this look all the time. It's funny how you go through phases and you're like, oh, I love this, I'm gonna do it all the time. And then you, you kind of like get too much of it. Like my daughter when she's like, oh, I love sausage bread, she make it for me every day. And then I make the sausage bread for her every day and she's like, I can't eat this anymore. I don't, I've had too much sausage bread, I'm over it. I'm like, oh great, good. Now that means I'm gonna to have to eat the stinking sausage bread because there's a whole fresh loaf in the fridge. But you know, you can do something and overdo it to the point where you're like, oh, I'm kind of tired of that look. But this is a classic, fast finish, simple wash, and you're gonna use such a minimal amount of paint that you, you're gonna be surprised. You could probably paint like, oh my gosh. I mean, this can was almost new, it's not even a quarter gone. I bet you I'll only dip my brush 10 times and I'll be done this entire piece. So I'm just wetting my cloth and pulling back my paint. So right now it looks a little dark, right? Like this looks darker, the area that I'm working versus up here. Once this gets dry, I'm gonna come in a lot closer and show you how the finish feels. It, it is really a, a, nice, a nice look, a nice worn out look. That's the only way I can describe it. But I do like to name it after my dog, which of course everybody thinks their dog is the best thing ever, right? Everybody's dogs are the best dogs ever. But my Stella, my brindle puppy Stella, is the one that I say is the inspo for this piece. Because she's got the same color. A little black, a little brown. You guys, that's already done. So I can see one spot that I don't love because it's like it got wiped off too much. So all you need to do is just take your brush, come back up, reapply it, re-wet your paper towel, and go over again. I'm gonna definitely be hitting these would you bends with a little bit more paint because they are a bit lighter and I don't wanna see the light that's in them because you can see the color difference between the would you bend and the actual wood. But when you paint it, you can't even tell. What do we think? Super pretty, right? So simple. Do you think you can do this? Like I feel like sometimes you guys see all these crazy finishes that we do and you're like, oh my gosh, there's so many things that can't do it. I know you can do this. Anybody can do this. It's, it's not, it's really not hard. It's just a matter of playing with some water, wiping it off and uh, playing with paint. Like I said, you could add waxes to this. I don't even mind it on the hinges. You can wipe it off the hinges a little bit more if you want, but they're like a coppery color and I don't mind having them peek through a little bit. I kind of want them to be mostly black too. All right, so let's bring you in nice and close so you can see while this is still wet, what the finished part looks like versus the unfinished part, okay? So now you can see this drawer. See how this has been dried? So you can see that peak of brown coming through. It's very rustic. You can still see all of the like little notches and distressing. I've left them, I like them like that. So this part is dry, this part is getting dry, and this part is still fresh and not painted. Can you see the difference now? Throw me some hearts, show me some love, let me know that I'm 
reaching you that you're all understanding the concept of just putting it on and wiping it off easiest finish ever I will finish this piece today and put all the hardware back on it and then I can take pictures of it tomorrow and take it to the shop like it's gonna be that fast so if you have a piece that's rustic in its bones like that looks a little rustic maybe the piece has a lot of chips maybe it has a lot of knots in it maybe it's not in the best condition to be painted in a one color finish because you're gonna see all the damages this my friends is the finish for you because you're gonna be able to do your entire project super fast and it's going to look like a million bucks I promise I promise and I'm gonna stage this with my puppy tomorrow I'm gonna to have to get out the doggy treats and like make her sit here she actually got really good at, at staging once <laughs> at one point when I was doing this look a lot I used to bribe her to come in here and sit in front of the furniture to take pictures um, and she she got to the point where if I came in here and put a piece of furniture down she would just come down and, and, and lay down in front of it she's like I'm here mom give me my treats I'm like yeah I know but get out of my way I'm trying to work <laughs> so I'm just painting over top of these would you bends making sure that that paint kind of gets in and around all of the cracks and edges because you really have to kind of pounce them in. These are a thicker wood you bends. Can you see how cute they are now though? Like how cute is that wood you bend for this style? Super cute, right? It kind of just elevates the, the look of the front of the piece. Gives it a little bit more, a little more oomph, a little more pizzazz. So like I did before, I'm just dragging this paint on. I'm not even covering it 100%. I'm just doing a nice, light application of midnight sky and then we're gonna wet our paper towel and just pull it back the simplest and easiest of the finishes we're doing it right now is anybody painting with me today anybody grab their paint brushes and paint while I'm painting I know sometimes AJ likes to grab her stuff and listen to lives and she likes to paint while we're painting I always like to hear what people are up to if you're painting today, drop in the comments below. I want to hear what you're painting. So I'm just pulling this damp paper towel and pushing that wood finish to come through a little bit heavier in some areas, a little less in others. I really like the chalk mineral paint for completing this look because it gives me the ability to work with it a little bit. Like it dries fairly quick, but you can get in and add more layers if you want quite easily. What do we think? How fast was that? So now I'm looking at this. This is getting drier. I feel like I need to take off a little bit more paint on this side just to match it up some. I want to see a little bit more wood peeking through. Let's rub it a little bit more. But you could paint this entire piece. If I wasn't busy here talking, you could paint an entire piece probably in less than half an hour and just be be done. Let's see. Do 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 you're working on old wooden ottoman. That's cool. You're in it. <laughs> Don't worry. This is always saved to the Dixie Bell paint page. You can always go back and rewatch any of these videos. And sometimes I even take these videos and then modify them and put them up on my YouTube with the finished products. But you can always find all of my finished items at the Top Drawer RVA um, here on Facebook or any social media channel, really. I'm always all over the place posting. So now what I'm going to do is open up these drawers, open up these little doors, because I want to make sure that I get paint on the edges just a light dusting doesn't have to be crazy I just want it to match I don't want somebody to open the door and see that wood so what would you call this paint wash brindle finish whatever you like burnt out finish burnt out look whatever your your heart wants to call it I'm gonna call it easy and I'm gonna call it fast because my gosh we just painted the whole front of this piece of furniture with this wood peeking through in the tiniest amount the tiniest amount of paint and paper towel I mean I am gonna get a little messy but that's the fun part of it is getting messy I'm gonna do the same thing to the top and do the same thing to the sides and then once it's dry all you need to do is clear coat it and you're done you are finished you can then take it and just put it wherever your little heart desires but I think I like to add a little bit of dark wax to the corners um, but I love, I love the peaks here of this wood. It's just, 
It's so pretty. It's so classy. It's like bringing it back to basics. Showing this little bit of wood peeking through. I'm going to keep that original hardware, so I'm not even going to have to update any hardware at all. But once you seal this, your paint is locked in and you are able to be done. I love this. I love it. It's just so simple. It's so classy. And for a piece that really needs some TLC like this one, <laughs> you need to do something that's going to be a little bit more rustic because if I were to come in and, and paint this in a nice, clean, um, shiny finish, you would see every little knot, every little chip, and I would be frustrated because I want a rustic, grungy finish. It's my favorite way to paint. Making things look like they were supposed to be that old, it's kind of kind of my jam. It's my favorite way to do this. So that, my friends, is all I have to do for that. All I need to do now is turn around the sides, work on the top, and I will be done. I brought some extra Would You Bend just in case I thought about putting it up there, but I feel like that's too fancy for this. I, I want to keep that a little bit more simple. So I did use Would You Bend today here and here. This is Would You Bend number 1009. I used one color of paint, barely any at all, barely any paint, okay? And it's midnight sky, which is like that little bit less black. Put it on, wiped it back. I mean, oh my gosh. Do I need to bring you even closer just to see how pretty this is? Because it is a stunning, stunning finish. Very simple. I know you can do this. You can see that wood grain peeking through and it is gorgeous. All you need to do to seal it is take a clear coat and wipe it on or wax if you prefer. Sometimes I like to use clear coat first and then come in and add a little bit more dark wax to the piece. But I think I'm gonna keep the original hardware like this. I kinda of like it when it has that patina to it. I'll put that original hardware back on and it'll be done. How fast is that? One day painting, one color painting with a wash, perfection. Keeping it simple. Should we bring the puppy back in for my inspo one more time before I let you go? I know you guys love some puppy kisses. I mean, I, I love puppy kisses. Let's give her a call and see if she'll come back in. Hey, Stella, come on, come back. Stella, come. She's ignoring me. She might be outside catching some corals. Either that or taking a cat nap. <laughs> but my puppy dog, Stella, that beautiful brindle finish, that beautiful brindle boxer finish is the inspo for this piece. Letting that natural wood shine through letting little peaks of that brown come through the black. It's just such a classy, classy look. If you do paint this, send me a message. I would love to see. I would love to see your finished product. And I am going to finish this up today, stage it tomorrow with my puppy, one color finish, one day painting, super simple with Dixie Bell. So stay tuned, friends. I will be back. And then again, don't forget to go over and follow my page, Top Drawer RBA. I'm super close to that milestone, almost 40,000 followers over there on my own page, and you can always find me across all social media channels at the Top Drawer RBA. I hope you guys have a fabulous day. I'll be done this in about 20 minutes, and you'll see the finished product tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye.